Okay, here's a section of the cable just showing some wrinkles and typically it'll get some black marks where it burns out. So it's gotta be replaced, you get the red button. So to start out, you need a T10 and there's three screws holding the lid on. One here, there, and then one closer to the hinge in the back. So we just take those out. And then you've gotta remove the, the hooks on the lid. There's some tinfoil tape covering these holes. There's three total. So there is a clip that holds it in and I made a little tool. I've just got an Allen wrench. And I'll show that in just a moment right here where I ground down the edge into a hook. Now, I'm gonna just fast forward a second and show you a picture or a video of the hood off. You can see those hooks and how they kind of slide down and clip. So what you have to do is go through the hole, go back behind it and then pull or pry and then that will release it from the clip. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Start in the front <clears throat> and then work your way back. So you get it hooked, you pull up and then you pull up on the lid and you can feel it release a little bit. It's not gonna go far because there's three. Move back to the next one, you same thing. You're gonna pry on it and then once you feel it loose and you bump it up some and it'll move enough where you know that it did release and you go to the back and same thing you pull up on the front while I'm pulling the whole thing will pull up and then you just pop it out so it's out of the way now there have been a lot of questions on how to do that now this black piece right here that they use as a shield is textured and it wears the cable out over time every one I've taken off has had wear wear into the guard itself and the cable so it was kind of a poor design, um, in my opinion. They did it more for aesthetics. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. You got your T10 again. There's four little screws holding it in. And just pull that out of the way and it just allows you to access the cable a little early easier. And you can see the actual wear groove marks where the cable's been running in this one. And even, it'll just wear into your cable. So here's a new cable, this is the one we sell. And I'll put a link in the um, bottom, the, to our Etsy store so you could order one if you need one. So the adhesive they use to hold it down to the rail is really strong. I, I use it and just reuse it. It just holds well. So you want to pull it off at an angle so it'll come loose from the adhesive and just slowly work it. Once you get it loose, it's, it'll pop free. And you got this plastic guide here and it has four or more feet that kind of hook it in. So you can use a flathead screwdriver or anything. You just kind of push in on them and pop up and the whole thing will just come up and then you can work your cable through it. So just pay attention on how the cable goes through it. So when you put your new one in, you can go back the same way. And here's a little shot of it. Now comes the fun part. Okay, this cable runs through this chain all the way down to the bottom and loops and hooks into the uh, daughter board here. So the first thing I like to do is go ahead and just push the cable back under the laser tube and just that way it's straight back and it's a little easier to access it and pull it through. You don't have to do this later. Um, instead of trying to pull it all through in one, what I've found works best is you start in the middle of the chain, use some tweezers or something to kind of pull up on it. And by the way, you can just cut the end off. It'll make things a lot easier if the cable's not replaceable, but I just left the end on just to show it can be done. There's more than one way. So you'll pull this out and eventually the connector is going to bind. It's going to catch the chain. So this little metal ruler I've got here works great. You can use anything metal or anything or plastic or anything flat to kind of go in there and push down on the connector to allow it to free up. And you just kind of have to work it in just a little patience. So and really it's just patience and taking it slow. But once you get it moving after the first few, it's relatively quick because you can see the connector a lot easier. Okay, so I've got it halfway out. Now it's time to move to the other side.
roll it back. See, I've already disconnected it from the board. I'm kind of making it twist, undid the little twist I have, straightening it out, kind of hand feeding it in as far as I can. Now it's the same way the connector faces the top part of the chain. So once again, I'm using my little metal ruler. I'm going in there. And once you hit it, you just kind of twist it a little bit or pry up on it and allow it to free. And same thing, you just work it through. And there you go. The old cable is out. And you can see that it is also starting to wear inside of the chain roller. So it's a good idea just to replace the whole cable. We thought about doing a split design, but it, it, you would end up having to replace it in the chain from just it rubbing on grime and dirt and buildup. It's just kind of an edible thing. So that's gone. So we're gonna start feeding in with a new cable. I like to put some painter's tape over the edge just to protect the connector. You don't wanna get anything in it or damage it. So it's kind of the same process as removing it. You slowly feed it in. Once again, I'm using my metal ruler and you can just kind of go behind that connector. And to me, it seems to a lot of times go in easier than it is to take it out. That's why some of them, I just cut the end off when I'm removing them because you don't have to worry about it. It just pulls straight out. Um, I've tried a lot of different ways. I've disassembled more stuff to reach it and it ended up being more of a pain trying to put it back. So leaving the chain together really helps. You see, I've already got this one through. <clears throat> and one thing you can do is you can mark the old cable where it comes out or where it, uh, the adhesive ends, and it'll help you line up how long you need to make it for the setup. Although you can adjust it later before you hook everything in. So going back the other way, I start in the middle. It's just the easiest way to do it. Um, that way you've got some visibility. Just be careful, painter's tape on there once again. Sometimes with this one, I find that it helps to work the chain, the roller back and forth some. I'm just gonna speed it up here. Just slowly poke it through. <clears throat> And just take it one link at a time. I mean, don't try to force it through anything. It's it, the first one I did took an hour and a half or more, and I've gotten it to where I can do them in about thirty minutes or less, just after you know repet repetitiveness, and it's not a big deal. So when you get to the very back, it's going to hit the tubes coming out, and you have to kind of pull them. The best thing to do is actually because that cable pulls out. I had to get some pliers just because it was stuck. I didn't squeeze the connector hard. I just couldn't get a grip on it with my fingers. So push the cables and the wires one way. If you'll notice, typically they go to toward the laser. Yeah, just like that, and then it'll pull straight out. Now I'll make these cables a little longer just so there was room, but nothing hits. So all you have to do is just line it up be careful when you're connecting it. Make sure you're going straight into the daughter board. You can damage that. We've had somebody damage one before and we had to do some solder work on the board to repair it. Uh, not ideal. So it's together now. You can see that new cable. It looks way too shiny. It's also a good idea to clean it while you've got it apart. So one thing to know right here, and I took a picture of this, is when it feeds through there, it's got a crease. You wanna crease it and make sure you tuck it back under there and then work it back into the clips. That way everything's held down real tight. There's no rubbing. You can put some captain's tape over it or something like that to hold it sturdy. And you can see when I had it apart, I just went ahead and cleaned everything real well. And I've lined up the cable, went ahead and stuck it down to the adhesive while it's on the, the guide. Now this, I did hit it with some sandpaper. You can see how shiny it is now. There's no um, roughness to it. The top is still flat but I just used some 600 grit sandpaper to clean off a lot of it and then some steel wool just to polish it. So we'll put it all back together. You can also use Teflon tape or something to protect it as well. And then the top just pops down. It's real easy to do. Install back your screws. Now, once again, it's just a good chance to clean 
while you're there, the back fan. Okay, now, once again, carefully line up the pins with the cable. And there you go. It's all back together and a test run. Thanks for watching. If you want to, we've got a link to the our Etsy store where you can order uh, this cable or any other parts we have or ask questions.